So, uh, Akshay, let us get started. So, uh, hello friends, good evening. Uh, so, let me introduce uh, Akshay Sura, who is a site for MVP, and he will be presenting today on site crawl. So, Akshay, you can take over from now. Hello, Akshay, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. All right. Hey, guys. Um, good evening. Um, for me, it's 4.30 in the morning, so it's good morning for me. Uh, okay. But my my name is uh, Akshay Sura. So the one which I'm uh, planning on presenting today, it's a module called a Sitecron. Um, Sitecron is a scheduling module for Sitecore. Sitecore, by default, has... Um, scheduling built into it, but it's all interval based, which basically means that a specific time cannot be guaranteed. So if I need something to run at 9 a.m. in the morning, uh, every single morning, there is no specific way to do it. Um, by So the Cyclone was built just out of need when I was working with a few of the companies which I was, and it just developed based on um, the, the need uh, of that company at that moment in time. So Sitecron by default comes with uh, four types of jobs. One is a base Sitecron job. Uh, the other one, it can run a PowerShell, so it's a PowerShell job. Um, there is a type of job which runs as a Sitecore job. So you can see it in the job sphere. Uh, depending on how your DevOps or your networking team work, um, they probably want it showing up in the jobs viewer so they can keep an eye on it. So if you need that, there's a type of job for that. And there's also a um, type of job which can run an existing uh, Sitecore schedule command. So there's a concept of schedule command in Sitecore where you can uh, – set up scheduled jobs inside of Sitecore itself. But again, you can't guarantee the time when they run. So inside Sitecore, you could run those jobs as well, so you don't have to rewrite the code. Um, out of the box, um, Sitecore com can, comes up with two sample um, jobs, so you can get an idea of how these work. Uh, one is a site Smart Publish, which can take in parameters for um, accepting the, the uh, target database, as well as uh, another job which shows you how to run a PowerShell uh, script. Now, the reason why PowerShell is my favorite type of job is that you could pretty much do anything. So if you, it's not necessary for you to install PowerShell to use um, Sitecron, but it is very helpful because just with that type of job, which is a PowerShell job, you could pretty much do anything you want um, essentially in the system. So what can Sitecron scheduling provide for us? So uh, if you need a job which runs on a specific schedule, for instance, I need something on Tuesdays and Thursdays and at 4 a.m. or I need it to run every um, every day at you know six o'clock or something which runs a specific uh, amount of time in a in a period or you need something to run at a specific date and time. The reason why this is kind of crucial is depending on kind of uh, customer or client you're working for, there might be need. So, like, uh, the reason why I had to develop it is the uh, company I was working for uh, needed to publish the information for the stock market here in the United States. And you need to publish those articles at a specific time, and they need to be available for uh, anyone who purchased that company's stock, if you didn't, then you wouldn't need uh, 
uh, you'd get penalized uh, by the stock market. Um, so that's that's why it was very important that it ran at a specific date and time. So that's kind of important. Um, so what I did is uh, I have a in vanilla Sitecore install. As you can see, there's really nothing on it. Um, this is Sitecore 8.2, whichever is the latest update, 6 or 7, I forget. Um, the best way to install Sitecron is via NuGet. Um, I keep it updated. This is the place where you can get the most amount of, uh, the most updated uh, version for it. I do have links and stuff in the marketplace, but it just takes forever to get things updated in the marketplace that I don't really keep that as updated as I need it to. Um, so installing it from NuGet is the best way to do it. Uh, so let me open up a sample solution so we can install it. So what I have in this sample um, solution is it's a very bare minimum solution. It doesn't really have anything. It has a web config from the site core site we're going to publish to. Um, the actual packages.config doesn't really have anything, whatever it comes by default. Um, I don't, I only have the xdb.config just to disable it. So it's on my instance, I just don't need it. So it's pretty much plain. The only thing I've done here is I've set up a published profile to push it to that specific install of Sitecore. Uh, other than that, I haven't really done anything in here. So if we go to Package Manager Console, I am just going to paste that, which is install package site corn and specifying the latest version, which is uh, 3.0.4. And what this is going to do. All right. So what this does is it, um, as you can see, add site cron. In order to add site cron, it adds uh, what's known as Quartz.net. So Sitecron runs on an open source library called Quartz, uh, which is used for scheduling. You could use it in any other .NET application if you needed to. Uh, that's what I chose to use it when I first uh, ran, uh, first built this module. Uh, right now we're at two, uh, version 2.5. Quartz is now at 3.1, um, I think. Uh, once you go to version 3, there's a concept of asynchronous jobs, which is really nice, but once I break the 2.x version of Quartz, it gets into code changes which need to be made, and uh, Sitecorn is actually used quite a lot. Um, so breaking changes would be a big deal, so that's something I need to think about. Quartz, uh, at least in the version 2, relies on common logging. Um, Version 3 doesn't need this common logging at all, but Quartz needs that, needs that to log. Uh, if you look at the uh, configuration files, um, so it, it adds the sitecron.config. So the first view, and I, I've tried to add um, comments wherever we need it. Uh, the first one is the, the context DB, and again, you don't need to touch any of this until you actually need to touch it. But uh, the context DB is which context is it running on? Um, so, for instance, 99% of the time, this would probably be running on your CM, uh, executing schedule um, schedule tasks. But there might be an instance where you need this to run on your CD uh, or CDs because they're generating sitemaps. For instance, we had to we had an instance where we had to generate I don't know I can't even imagine like three four million items or products um, based sitemap on the CDs individually. This was like three or four years ago, um, so that's why I had to add the context DB. This is basically, we will see what that is. It's how much time it needs to wait to execute um, a job. Uh, there is a concept, and again, I'll mention it, but don't have to spend too much time. 
Um, there's a concept of, say, a, a piece of code I wrote uh, for the saved handler, and um, the source for Sitecoin is freely available, so anyone can make any change if they would like. It's on it's on GitHub. So essentially what the saved handler does is, uh, if you choose to use it, and I haven't really used it in production systems, is it will, every time you save an item, it will look at the published restrictions for that item and automatically schedule the um, the item to be published based on the published restrictions. So, say for instance, you have a news uh, news item which is which should be live uh, on December first at three o'clock in the morning. And if you set that in the published restrictions, enable this and save it, it will automatically schedule it. But again, I haven't really tested it. Um, there's another concept called as environment, and again, I don't really, it's mainly for logging purposes at this moment, or, or you could utilize it whichever way you would like, but that's something there. Um, there's commands for execution, there's a bunch of events we listen to, to know if the, the schedule item has been changed, there's an initialization pipeline. Um, there are some, um, uh, there's a job provider, so Sitecron by itself can consume jobs based in just the database alone as items, just the configuration, so you can make Sitecron just uh, ingest all the schedules from a, con uh, from a config file, or you can have a uh, provider which con which looks at both where the database as well as the the configuration. The reason why this is <clears throat> the reason why this is important is recently we had um, we had a need where we were moving data from environment to environment, but we had few we had a few jobs which needed to run in a specific environment all the time. So it was easy for us to use a config transform, build the um, sitecon. Uh, schedule job and deploy it to that environment and without any items it actually ran the schedules. Um, there is uh, a log for net uh, appender over here which just pushes the log to a specific log without cluttering the log uh, file. Um, last but not the least, the sitecronjobs.config which is what I was talking about. So if you wanted to load a schedule job from configuration, you can, um, as long as you know what you're doing. So you have to specify all the values for it, but it will load the jobs from there. Uh, the other thing it does do is it adds this folder called Sitecore Package. So either you have a full install of the module and the items, or there is a package just for the items only. So like once you finish using this, or installing it, it's better just to delete it. So at this point, we have that in our uh, in our project. Now let me get back here. What I'm going to do is I will install just the items only package at this moment because I just placed it in the data packages folder. This, this really shouldn't take that long. It's um, a very small module. Um, uh, let me show you. So what it does is it in, uh, installs this called Sitecron. Uh, out of the box, we will look at execution reports for that I need this. Um, we will talk about that in a second, but as you can see, there's uh, a few jobs which come by default, but it but it disables it. So in this case, um, you could this is the job which is um, off, it's based off of the Quartz iJob implementation. So you could write anything you want and put it in here if you have your own custom job. Um, and this is out of the box, so it's execute partial. This is the con expression. So if you don't know current expressions, which I have no clue myself because I don't really want to remember it, 
um, there is this site called Cronmaker, which kind of gives you an idea. So basically, I want to, every day at 8 o'clock, this is the Cron expression, and say, for instance, I need it Monday, Saturday, and Thursday at 5 in the evening. It will generate the Cron expression for you. So whichever complication or whichever thing you can think about, um, this Cronmaker will make that configuration for you and you just plop it in here and it will consume it. Um, there's this execute at the exact date and time. So if you specify both the cron expression and the execute exactly at a specific date and time, it will choose the exact date and time over the cron expression, but you can specify either or. There's a concept of parameters where this is almost like a URL parameters where you can pass in any parameters your job needs. Um, in the PowerShell, it does look at this and it can consume it. Uh, there's a concept of items. So you can pass in for your job um, a bunch of items. Um, in our case, uh, for a PowerShell job, for instance, you can specify a thousand items. It's only going to pick the first one. Uh, the reason is that we don't know the concurrency. We don't know the dependency, how long a job takes, for instance. So right now, the the execute PowerShell job only is limited to the first uh, script or the first um, script item it can uh, utilize because we just don't want to create a headache. Um, this concept of archive after execution. So after it executes this job, if you have this selected, it will archive it using the site core archive so it doesn't appear on this on this screen anymore. Um, you can disable it. So as you can see, uh, well, actually, I haven't deployed it, but if you enable disable it, you can actually see the the red go away. Um, this concept of statistics. So uh, it will tell you when it la last ran, when it's going to run next, what's the execution time. But this is actually deprecated. Um, I'll show you what to do for the next one. So why don't I just publish this for now? So all it's doing is just just publishing to that uh, root at this point. Let me go back here. Let's refresh. Why oh, not the time? Oh, sorry. My mistake. I wasn't in the admin mode. Alright. So what this does is it just um, pushes all this back end part of Sitecron into the the website and that should enable us to use all right, there you go. All right, let's get back here. Let's refresh. I'll take some time. So until that comes up, uh, like I mentioned, the it's open source. It's on GitHub. Um, you can do pull requests if you want to. There's a bunch of code up here which kind of shows you the internals of how the jobs run. Uh, if you can see this, so this is the PowerShell job I was talking about. All you have to do is just inherit from the iJob to create your own custom job implementation, and you can write whatever you need to in there to consume it uh, here. So now that we have it installed. All right, so let's see. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'll save this. So as soon as I um, enable it, you can see that it it shows up over there. Uh, what you can also do is on any job, you can uh, execute it right now. So when I say execute now, as you can see, all it does is it makes a copy of it. This is if we are trying to execute it 
at a time when it wasn't supposed to. You just, you know, for whatever reason, the job didn't run or you needed to run at this moment in time. So you could choose to execute now. It makes a copy of the job and it runs it. Um, once it's done finishing it, it'll archive it. Uh, the place where you can actually see this, which is kind of interesting. So for every execution of a job, uh, this is item buckets, it will store uh, the last time it ran any log entry. So there is a concept where you can uh, you can store a quite a bit of amount of a running log for that particular job, and you can give that back to Sitecron, which then stores it in here. So imagine if you're trying to do uh, if you're trying to have a long running sys syndication job where you're trying to churn through a lot of items, you have log entries, you can store all of that and plop them in here so that you can see at any point, hey, this job executed, this is all what happened in here. At this moment, when you notice over here, it just has a GUID that doesn't have an item reference because the item which was getting executed was a was archived the moment it was executed. That's why it doesn't really care for it. Um, so what I wanted to show you is when before I enable that other job, I set the schedule so it actually runs it. So the difference is this ran as well, but as you can see here, it'll show you the actual job because this job is still available in the content tree. It has not been archived. Now, where this gets interesting is, let me get to the, the log so we can take a look at it. So in the SB log, So the sitecon log file tells you quite a few things, which is the version, the jobs it's trying to load. If you notice, it'll tell you if the job is coming from the database, or if it's coming from a config, if it's loaded or not loaded. In our case, uh, the job was loaded, which is uh, the partial script. It will tell you when the job is being executed. Um, if something changes in the jobs, it will reload it. At uh, 4.54, which is the exact time we scheduled the other one for, it actually ran the job all by itself. I didn't really have to do anything for it. And that's one of the reasons why it's very important, which is I need the job to run at a specific time, and it just runs it. And that's the most important. So it'll tell you that's the job. It ran it. What did it do? It ran a you know, partial script. And that's that's that, it just takes care of that, so it's not an issue whatsoever. So you could schedule your jobs whichever way you like based on the cron expression like you showed you guys. Um, pretty simple and straightforward, it's really not difficult at all. Some of the other jobs are, like I mentioned, the smart publish. Um, there is a site course schedule, um, schedule job where you can specify uh, if you ha already have a schedule command inside of Sitecore, you could use that instead of rewriting the code for it. You just create a job type of um, Sitecore uh, schedule command and then link which schedule command you need to run at what time, and then it'll take care of it. Uh, here I have extended the base Sitecore job to uh, specify additional parameters so I can show it in the job viewer. So all we need to do, so all of these, point to a different uh, template. So if you need to um, if you need to extend your job, so for instance, the base sitecon job has a bunch of fields which it needs to run. Um, but say for instance, your custom job needs to know the name, the color, the height, the width for whatever reason, you could just inherit it. So these guys, as you can see, the schedule command job needs its own uh, attributes in order to run, so to pick the exact schedule command. Um, but it also inherits the site cron job. So as long as you inherit the site cron job, uh, you could have a custom template defining a custom 
job you like and you can execute that and it will it will load those jobs in memory and run it um, there is a bunch of code up here so you can look at that or you could look at say for instance a smart published job and all you have to do is it's just an iJob implementation nothing magical here it's just pretty pretty simple um, this is where you can see how I'm setting back the information to be saved in that execution report. So each time something executes, it stores it in the execution reports for you to go back and refer to. And again, you don't need um, PowerShell for this, but honestly, I don't know why you wouldn't have PowerShell running um, on this in order for you to uh, utilize uh, the scripting capabilities. So the reason I like a PowerShell job over, for instance, a custom iJob implementation is for code. Um, so having to go through a code deploy as opposed to an item um, is, is a big deal. So if you need something done on a specific environment, you don't have to wait for a code deploy to do it. Uh, having the power of um, PowerShell itself is more than enough for you to um, get any any job done. Uh, let's go back here. So we looked at config-based jobs. We looked at job reports, stats. Um, we'll talk about the upcoming features in a second. The archive after execution, execute now. Uh, and we've looked at the jobs which can run as sidecore jobs, disabled. Uh, and parameters. So in the upcoming features, what I'm working on is one is to move to um, the new version of Quartz, which will give us a um, uh, asynchronous job execution, which is very, very cool that we can run a bunch of jobs asynchronously. That's something I'm looking at, but again, because of the breaking changes, that's something which I'm going to hold off on or maybe have a different version of um, just so that we don't break too many things. Um, there is a concept of multiple environments. So at this moment, there is a setting uh, which, so the publishing instance is what, um, if you have that set, the job, if you have five CMs running, it will only run on the main publishing instance. Uh, uh, in that cluster so it doesn't run on every single thing. If you need a job which can uh, run on a CD instance, you would have to um, just make it so that it, it uh, the publishing restriction is set to the CD instance and you could run it accordingly. Um, there's a bunch of code, so the, the GitHub is a good resource for you to look at, um, get the uh, installed from SiteCron, from NuGet. There's a couple of blog posts out there. So if you search for SiteCron, you'll find a ton of blog posts on you know, how to create a custom job, how to run a custom job, all kinds of information. Uh, CronMaker is always, always useful. I use it every single day just because I don't want to remember how to do the cron expression. Um, Sidecore Stack Exchange is a really good resource. I don't know how many of you are registered. If you're not, please register there. Uh, it's a very good um, resource. Um, it's in public beta at this moment in time. So any questions you want to ask, uh, answers you want to give, upvote, downvote, or just pure comment on questions, it'll really help us get out of the public beta. Um, Sitecore Slack, again, there's, I think, over 3,000 people on Slack. Um, very useful. we able to get to a bunch of people. I know that you guys use the WhatsApp group, which is pretty active, but uh, we go through over 10,000 messages every week on Slack, so it's it's pretty active. So make sure you, you're on there. Um, again, you can... Uh, search for join site course Slack and you'll find the link to get to it. Uh, and again, if you have any questions for me, um, 
after we finish this presentation, you can always reach out to me on Slack or on Twitter or LinkedIn or, you know, I'm not on Facebook or I don't really look at messages on Facebook, but you can always reach out to me. Um, do you guys have any questions? Yeah, I have about four or five, one with two parts. This is Mike. Can I ask no. You? Yes. All right, no. so just to let you know, all right, just to fill you in on the Slack numbers, there are 4,280 people on it right now. Um, not at this exact moment, but that's how many people we have. Um, so if I wanted to put in a pull request for this, how long should I expect a turnaround time for that? One minute. Awesome. <laughs> uh, for logging, how many are there different levels of logging? Let's say I want something very verbose versus something not verbose at all. Do you have different login levels? Uh, you could set a different login level. It's up to you what you do, right? So, uh, right, it would be you are the one logging on the. Uh, well, it's, I'm, I'm talking about anything like built in already, out of the box stuff. So I'm sure you must have some try catches uh, in somewhere. Yeah, yeah. You can just as a standard log for net appender, you could set which logging level you want. I have a few. Gotcha. I have a ton which are info, but there are error messages as well. Awesome. Uh, for that parameters field, it looked like it wanted like a query string type of value. Any thoughts of using a name value list instead? Uh not really. I don't really. If mm -hmm. It, it, that's get the value out of you. Give, it, it just makes it a lot easier because it'll just you know have a name value, name value, and it'll keep adding them. True. It's just a thought. Yeah, I haven't really looked into it. Honestly, I don't know if how often people use it or not. It's all dependent not very. on on yeah feedback, and this is just my personal usage, right? That I built it. Um, it satisfies what I need to do, but again, I don't use a lot of parameters to begin with, so it really doesn't make much uh, difference to me, but if that's something people use and they use a lot of it, it might make sense to look at that. Very cool. Um, how much of this is in the Cycle RFC container? How much is it uh, in the Cycle configuration? Like, could we swap out, like, how this works? from different vantage points, or there's a lot of things kind of, you just kind of stuck with a lot of how it works out of the box? Um, so that, that a lot of it you're stuck with uh, out of the box just because of the dependency on Quartz. Right. Uh, although version three of Quartz, they do do quite a bit of DI you're able to do because they've abstracted it a lot more than the Quartz 2.0. Um, 2.5. So I think that would that would be uh, a good advantage for us to get to that. Um, I cool. don't like reg, especially for like an open source module. It, I don't think it would make sense for me to register things via code. Having it via config would do. I mean, this was the first dabble into DI because Ben. Golden decided to refactor it for me, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, there's a lot that. more you can do. I just have to spend time. Yeah, I just have to spend any and time doing it. But most of it, I think, is limitation with quartz. And then my last question would be: um, if somebody does have a question around this module, and they are on Slack, like I am all day, which channel is the best channel to ask those questions? Uh, I don't know. We don't, I mean, I would this say module for, doesn't I would say do like enough. for a chat. Uh, I, and then tell so someone. A question. I, I know the answer. <laughs> but the Yeah, if people have questions on this, ask in Sitecore chat. And, you know, definitely the people will help you out there because we don't have a devoted channel to this. But maybe in the future we could. And it looks like there is another question from Alara. Uh, if, if you would like to add Cyprus jobs in a report in analytics, is it possible? Uh, I don't know what that means, but so like the you want to add a so like for XDB. So if you want to like have an analytics report from the 
uh, the marketing dashboard, if I, I forget where that is. Uh, could you like tie in Cyclone's jobs uh, information into those reports? So I guess uh, at the end of the day, does this tie into XConnect at all or XDV? No, it does not. But again, if you, depending on what you're trying to accomplish, I mean, your your custom job or your PowerShell script can do those things for you. I would really need to know what the case use case is to really. Um, I don't know if if they are saying can you execute it from elsewhere. So technically, yes, you can write something else like a button or wherever and speak which executes a sidecon job if you like. Um, but I just need to know the use case. Gotcha. I don't, I don't see any more questions in the chat window. Um, uh, people sh feel welcome to just jump in and ask actually questions on this. Yeah, guys, any questions? Do you have any questions? Yes. So, we can shoot up now. The floor is yours. Okay. Okay. All right then. So uh, we hope we don't have any questions for now. So Akshay, on behalf of right, thank you, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, yeah. So Akshay, on uh, behalf of SCG Chennai, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for such a wonderful webinar on Sitecron. So we really appreciate and definitely looking forward to many successes from you as well. And I well, hope all of you are here today's session. For those who have missed, the session has been recorded and we'll be sharing with everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. And before we wrap it up, I would, yeah, before we wrap it up, uh, Akshay, I would just like to tell you, Kishore has sent, in, sent his sincere apologies for not making it up to the meeting because of some other engagement. Yeah. Okay, no worries. So, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, bye, guys. Have a good evening. Okay. Right, cheers. Yeah. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.